What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell podcast. And I have a very, very, very good friend of the show and a, what I would consider a very special guest today. And that is Joe DiStefano. Joe, what is up, brother? How are you, man? Jay, man, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to chat and see where this goes and uh, grateful to be here, honored to be here. And let's, let's have a chat, man. Joe, man. So first off, for those of you guys that have not listened to the podcast that Joe and I did, Joe interviewed me and we talked about vibration and consciousness and a lot of other things. And very truthfully, and I don't say this because I've done literally hundreds of podcasts in my life. It's the best podcast bar none that I've ever done. And that includes even my stuff in health optimization because it really clarifies a lot of things about where we're headed as a species. So as I told Joe, I just hope that I can do as good a job as he did with me and in interviewing me today on his podcast, because obviously this is for the Jay Campbell podcast. But Joe, just real quick, man, we've been boys now for three years. You know, we've only met on the internet, but we've had so many different conversations. I mean, you're a very high vibrational being. When people like us get around each other, we kind of, so to speak, elevate the vibe of everything and around us. So, you know, let me just ask you, today is September 17th. We are literally less than 60 days away from quote unquote, the election that may or may not, you know, dictate or decide the free world, you know, in the direction that this planet heads. What are your insights right now? I and mean, we have a lot of points to talk about, but what are your insights, like how the general, you know, the vibration of the collective is right now on planet Earth? Man, well, um, on planet Earth, you know, and I am in Europe right now, you know, we, we got the hell out of there. <laughs> we started to get crazy because we, we had that, you know, we had that option. But I think right now on planet Earth, I think that there, there are a lot of people waking up, Jay, you know, and I think a lot of them are kind of confused. So before, you know, if you're, if you're completely asleep and completely consuming and, you know, you're just completely over here, if, if I get on the phone with somebody or my mom and she says, I don't know who to believe anymore, like that's, that's a win. That's a total win, bro. That's a total win. And I think that there's a ton of people in that place right now where they're like, hey, like I thought I could hang my hat over there. I can't. I'm not ready to put it over there just yet. So there's this, I think there is a confused state of the world right now where people, they, they think they know what's going on, but they really don't. And they think they believe in this person, but they're not sure. And so it's a map. People are feeling very anxious um, but I think they're on the path to a much broader awakening because every single day, I mean, even you and I who talk about some of this more controversial type stuff, every day we can actually talk about a little bit more. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And I think about, you know, I recorded a show with a doc and uh, it was crazy because it was maybe a month before I got it out. We were kind of backlogged. And, and in that month, it became controversial, <laughs> right? You know, it was like, no, we were just talking about hand sanitizer, man. You know, that shouldn't be a, a thing. But, you know, he ended up talking about, and this was a while ago, but he ended up talking about, you know, you don't want to use it. You don't want to overdo it. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, you know, our, our health is depending on hand sanitizer right now. And, right. and so I think that there's this kind of extremely, you know, uh, energetically just active time and people don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. But, but more people, Jay, I mean, you and I text all the time and, and we're connected to a lot of amazing people that are just, you know, for those that see what's happening or feel it, we're doing more inner work on ourselves than we've probably ever done and realizing just, you know, especially if you're a truther and you're, you're sharing these things publicly, it's not easy, man. It's not easy to do what you do. I don't do half what you do out there. And um, when I do, I feel that sort of when you start getting the, the, the messages or the tweets and, the, yeah. uh, you know, I'm so disappointed in you or whatever it is. It's, it's like it's, it's tough to deal with and it's you need a, a deep, deep well 
to every single day come out. But the last thing I'll say, Jay, is, you know, like you said on our show, you and I, you know, I, I first connected with you on, on the Met Forum and stuff, right? Yeah. And, and for me, I talk about free medicine and getting sun and, you know, all these things that we're super passionate about. But when you and I get on a show like we did a couple of weeks ago on Stack, the reason why that show was so great is because right now, like the motivation, the inspiration, the energy is just, it's all around us, man. And so now we're not just trying to get someone to spend 20 minutes in the sun. We're actually trying to change the future for my kid, right? We're trying to change the future for your children. And yeah. so the, the cost has never been higher. And so you might think I'm passionate when I tell you to walk outside barefoot in the sun, but when it comes down to, you know, whatever controversial topic you want to talk about, politics, vaccines, uh, whatever, all of a sudden it's just going to flow because there's no time like the present, man. I mean, there is it's so funny. You're just talking about barefoot. So I haven't even literally worn shoes into my studio in three years, right? Like I'm standing on a grounding mat. Yes. I'm in a building in Southern California, but I stand on a grounding mat right here is a grounding mat. Like I'm always grounded. Um, but back to what you were just saying too. And then like, yeah, dude, you and you, we could go so many different directions, but like, it's funny. Cause yes, you talk about free medicine and, and again, you probably have talked about this with other people, but I mean, just think dude, 20 years ago about how the medical, you know, whatever you want to call them, the sick care reptilian medical establishment, you know, every time now, remember I put that thing in there when you see the snakes or in the caduceus yeah, yeah. and it's like, it's staring at us, dude. It's, it's but it's everywhere. like the reality of that is like, they were telling your mom and my mom and their moms that if you don't put thick, you know, what is it? What was it called? Hydrogen peroxide based silica creams on your skin's kid's skin that they were going to get sunburned and die. And that sun, the sun was evil. Right. And I mean, it's like incredible to think because I remember being a seventh grade kid and listening to some idiot talk about how important it was to wear a hundred block and thinking as I was sitting in that seventh grade classroom. And I, I remember where it was thinking, wait a minute, if this was true, then how would the plants be alive? How does photosynthesis work, right? So like, I say those things, Joe, because I want to get into a conversation about like, really, as people become more aware, and you're right, every day people are waking up, the unravelment of what we've been led to believe with the LIE capital is, it's all around us. Like, yeah. we're now finding out that almost everything <laughs> they taught us is the inverse of the truth. I mean, like, I know this from living in Southern California, growing up on the East Coast. Like, if I do not get sun exposure for, you know, and I love that 20 minutes. For me, it's like literally 15 to 30 minutes a day. Yeah. I get dry skin. I feel like shit, right? Seasonal defective disorder. Um, mentally, I'm not the same person. I don't have the drive and the motivation. So again, you know, your thoughts on how much the system has been a lie and just a giant uh, web to a, a web that wove us in a direction that they wanted us. And we're not going to talk about they on this show today, Joe, <laughs> unless you want to, but I uh, mean, like, it, it really was driven for them to profit uh, off of us really. Yeah. Cause anyone will agree at that. Correct. hundred percent Jay. And you know, just to kind of, you know, support what you're saying here, I was, uh, you know, uh, like sitting out at the port on the porch of my in-laws one day posting on Instagram. And I came up with 40 things that were not only a little off, but, but ass backwards, 180 degrees. Right. <laughs> and that was just Wednesday night posting on Instagram came up with 40. And when we look, when we look at something like the, you know, the food pyramid, like sure. that, like, it didn't change. It didn't change from 1972 forward, right? So you can, you can find this online. Sure. Uh, it started, it wasn't a pyramid. It was, I think it was a square and you know, right. It didn't change really till 2011, right? Every iteration was essentially the exact same thing. Right. Ratchet down, you know, ratchet down dairy, ratchet down meat, you know, put some more fats at the top. Right. But the bottom was always grains. The biggest thing was always bread. <laughs> And, and it wasn't till 2011 that they created my plate. And that's, you could actually eat the same food pyramid with the my plate, but it's a, right. there's a little more up to interpretation. Sure. Now, you know, like you said, Jay, it's everywhere. I mean, this, and my journey started here. When I was 14, I watched my dad have a heart attack and, you know, I drove him to the hospital. It was like a crazy, you know, one of the traumas I've actually worked through. Sure. But 
I grew up in a health conscious household, man. Like we followed that damn food pyramid to a T. Right. I wasn't allowed to have peanut butter as a kid, but I could eat Skittles, Amazing. right? Because fat was like the thing. Now, my dad, is he's an Italian and uh, we didn't eat that much meat, man. We, my dad was obsessed with water. We right. drank a ton of water, most all tap water, let's be serious. Right. Um, all tap water. We, you know, went to the dentist all the time. We, you know, we, uh, you know, we ate the food pyramid. My dad has this massive heart attack in, in 2000 and uh, maybe it was 99, but they say no more steak and eggs. I'm like, we're freaking not even allowed to eat steak and eggs, man. You know, and that was the first, just like you said, I, I was a kid, didn't even have my driver's license. I'm like, if steak and eggs cause this shit, how did this Right. How did this happen to my dad? Because we don't even eat steak and eggs. Right. We eat pasta and red sauce. Like, what are you right. talking about? Um, anyways, that's the first. And then my own story, I basically, you know, my undergrads in exercise physiology and nutrition. And in 2007, I was put on a keto diet, which was called the epilepsy diet because I sure. had a tra traumatic brain injury. Right. And I, my emotions from a lifetime of, you know, hearing fat demonized, I was scared to death to eat butter, man. What are you out of your mind? I was, but- then after a week, I felt like a million bucks and I haven't looked back and now I help people do the same thing. But, uh, but no, man, it's a, the system is designed, sick care is designed to uh, throw you into a system. If you eat this way, you're going to continue to get sick. You can watch from 19, I think it was 1972 that that first food pyramid came out that was a square. Right. From every decade, from the 70s to present, the obesity rate, the, the severe de obesity, the, the morbid obesity right. doubled every decade. Right. And the food pyramid did not change. Exactly. So it tells you all you need to know. Right. right. And now, and by the way, I just saw a stat point. And by the way, I want to go deeper because you really hit something. Because, okay, so let's talk about the food pyramid. But, but I just saw a stat just to, 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 to add to what you just said. Bro, 70% of people in the United States right now over the age of 40 are obese, mm -hmm. obese, not fat, <laughs> right. obese, 70% obese. of adults in the United States over the age of 40 are obese, 70%. Now, obviously that number has accelerated due to COVID, but I want to talk about the food pyramid and I want to, I want to really get deep on this. Now, obviously, you know, I just did an amazing podcast with JB Hanley and Dr. Jim Meehan on vaccinations. Yeah. It's probably yeah. the best podcast ever done. How YouTube is not deleted, I don't even know, but it was so uh, profound. But there was one small point, and I didn't want to get deep, but I'll, I'll do it with you, on how if you go into the food pyramid, and you go into the vaccinations, and you go into all these like talking points that people are looking at now, again, part of the scam, part of the ruse, bro, it's always being funded by a family. There's some elite family behind all these. The food pyramid is the Kellogg family. The vaccinations was the Rockefellers. Now, again, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the you know, elite no, uh, Illuminati families. But there's again, if you really look deep into this, this is always about profit. And there's always someone that's benefiting from this. But so it's like if, if, if this, this group or these families you know, of you know, uh, repute a lot of money and, and means and whatever. Again, you know, there's a bunch of other names you could throw out Rothschilds and, you know, but if that's really what it is, like, why do they keep the masses from becoming better? Because is it really just about making money and minimizing all of them? Or is it the real serious conspiratorial question of, are they not really like us? And it's like another species or subclass of human, or maybe just another species altogether, like living amongst us that they don't really give a shit about us. They look at humans as slaves. Because again, it's very simple to go back and fact check me in this podcast. You can go back and you can read about the 1917 through 1923 Spanish flu. It killed statistically between 26 and 30% of the world's population. It all came from the vaccinations that were given to the US military in 1918 and 19. This is all supportable and fact checkable now. Not even Google is suppressing this, right? So it's like you look at the food pyramids. I mean, the food pyramids were designed in the 50s or 60s or whatever it was. And then, like you said, it became ubiquitous in the 70s. But it's the Kellogg family. It's the people that make all the cereal, you know, Olin Mills or General Mills or all those questions, you know, companies were all like part of like what was called big agra, 
right? So, so what are your thoughts on that? Is that really how simple it is to make it less conspiratorial for people that don't want to believe me and you? <laughs> so I think I, a great question. And I think, you know, the way that I explain this, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's going on to my mom or, you know, somebody like this is I was like, when you look at, when you look at politics and you think politics are the thing, you know, the thing is actually five degrees deeper than politics, right. but we get stuck in the weeds over here. Yeah. And so when I, if I say something, if I'm talking to my mom, if I'm like, mom, I don't want to tell you about what's actually happening. So let's stay, let's stay with stay politics. Stay in your lane, mom. <laughs> stay in your lane. So when we look at this simply, but, but in terms of your question, Jay, it's like, so if we go back, if we go way over here without getting too conspiratorial in case, right. you know, in case some folks, this is their first time listening to your show, they can go back and, and see what I'm saying right. easily. But if we, if we go in the, uh, in the vein of, okay, there are these different degrees of, of real kind of decision-making happening, right? And if we go as far as we can, as deep as we can go, there's a small group of people that, um, that do want to essentially make the human race a little bit easier to control and manipulate and move around. For sure. And then as you get closer to us, there are these families, the Kellogg's, the, right. these people that who knows how, you know, how directly connected they are to those folks over there. Right. But they're like, yo, I just want to make some dough. And so if I can get, you know, if I can get, you know, the food pyramid to just say that cereal is the, is the thing that we need 12 servings a day, of, right. then, you know, we're going to do this. Right. If I can make soy protein, you know, uh, a, a health food, then right. my shitty crop is going to make me a whole bunch of money. <laughs> right. I think that's what's going on. So I agree. the I families agree. don't know that someone's pulling their strings. Right. They just got, you know, they just want people to walk in with their pants down and their wallets open and just make some dough. So I think, I, so obviously I agree. And I set you up and I, I figured you'd give me that answer. <laughs> I, I, but I'm no, but I mean, I, I think that that's the best way to go about with taking the people, like you said, who are now like on the fence of like, I don't believe that anymore, but are kind of still ambivalent because they don't have the whole, you know, old frame of awareness that you and I have. And I'm not saying that you and I are special. I'm just saying like, you know, like you said, the truth community is over here and a lot of people that haven't woken up are over here. And now the people in the middle are like you said, the, 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 they're now like, well, wait a minute. Right. But to, to take that group who are now off the fence but still ambivalent because they don't have the whole frame. I think it's a lot easier to say that, like, look, this is about profit. Right. You know, these people connected to these elite families, connected to whomever is puppeteering them are really just about making a better life for themselves. And how do they do that? They have more money, right? right. And they have an angle or they have a, a scheme or, you know, their company does this or does that. And I, I really do think that most people, you know, I'll use my mom and dad, for example, they can see that, you know, my dad can clearly see, what's going on right now with the left? You know, my dad's always been pretty much a pro business kind of guy. So I would say he's conservative, which would make him lead or lean Republican, but he never always was like not voting for Democrats. There, there have been some Democrats in his past that he was supported. So right. it's, it, it's kind of like now where we are is like people kind of look at things, at least the people that have gotten off of the sleep, you know, fuel, and are in the middle where they're looking at things with an open eye, right? With eyes to see, and they can see the angle that a lot of people are taking. So I, I think that's the best way to, to talk about it. But you know what, dude, for the rest of this podcast, let's do some really good stuff and make this like incredibly beneficial for people. Because as I told you off air, right now, a lot of people are experiencing the collective dark night of the soul, right? right. COVID has financially handicapped a lot of people. Um, beyond the financial handicapping, people have mental health issues. They've been cooped up, oppressed in their houses, driven to fear. Um, you know, you and I, again, those of us that have inner work, contemplative, introspective, meditative practices are fine because yeah. this is just par for the course. But for the majority, they don't. So, you know, I want to really talk about a lot of the resources that you talk about and you use with your coaching clients and stuff like that. And yeah. like, obviously, you know, let's talk about this. Let's like really drill deep breath work. Talk yeah. a little bit about breath work and how important it's such a small thing in a person's life. Again, free medicine, but talk about that. Yeah, man. Well, your breath, you know, in some ways, 
in some ways it is, it is essentially where your consciousness and your unconsciousness kind of collide, right? right? It's this, it's this piece of our physiology that if we don't do it on purpose, it happens to us, right? So it's the, it's the easy thing to kind of look at when you want to control uh, your emotions or you want to improve your health. It's this thing that will immediately communicate with all systems of the body and make them better or worse. Right now, when we, when we look at breath, you know, the first thing I talk about all the time. So there's, there's a lot of different components of breath, Jay. And I think the number one thing that people can do when they're trying to improve their health is just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Breathe through your nose. And you know, this alone just makes such a massive difference right. in, in everything. And I, you know, it's funny, my podcast producer was listening to some of my shows and uh, the other day he was like, Hey man, like I got a deviated septum and you know, like, you know, how do I, what do you think I, do I do, bro? What, dude, am I hopeless? Am I screwed? Am I going to like, you know, like die to an early grave? And I was like, yo man, no, just, you know, eat beef jerky and hum. So I want, you know, and I think so much of the breath problem and and we'll start with kind of facial structure and why people tend to breathe through their mouth. And a lot of it has to do with when we're kids, we eat really soft foods. Yeah. And when we eat really soft foods and we're not using our, our, our chewing, we're not strengthening our mouth. Our face gets a little longer, more droopy. Our sinuses kind of get crummy and sure. not used very much. Right? right. And then you add in all these traumas that we don't deal with and all this like sympathetic stimulation and, da, 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 and we start mouth breathing that unravels our health. Now breathing through our nose or breathing in general can be chicken or the egg. Right. So in other words, if your if your health is a, is a mess, you know, you can um, you know, your breath might've be started that, or you might have some kind of gut problem or some other issue and you began breathing through your mouth because you're stressed all the time, yeah. right? So it's, you know, it's, but either way, we got to get back to it. So number one is breathing through our nose and, you know, even things like mouth taping at night, because for the guy that, you know, uh, you know, was conscious about his breath throughout the day, but then just goes and, you know, right. sleeps all night, like with his mouth right. open or something. So uh, those two things alone. Now, if people want to kind of really tap into their system, uh, they should simply start doing something like box breathing. And what this does is it immediately calms down your nervous system. It yeah. kind of puts you into a higher level of control. And you and I, you know, we, we probably both have the same different monitors and we look at our heart rate variability and all this jazz. Box breathing is a super easy way to just put yourself in the driver's seat a little bit. Right. And then the last thing I want to say, Jay, and the other thing that people need to realize as it relates to quote breath work, because it's a, you know, it's a buzzword. It's crazy. Um, I did a TED talk, a TEDx talk on breath like five or six years ago. And I, I've never watched it because it's, I, I flew to Switzerland, got off the plane, jumped on the stage and I missed my like favorite day. But anyways, that's like a million views, right? So it had like 200,000 views for two years. And now in the last like year, it's, you know, just gone crazy. So breath work. The term is just, it's just all over the place. But I think people need to realize there's two different types. There's breathing is breathing, but what we commonly refer to breath work is actually respiration, yeah. right? So when we start breathing through our nose and these things, now breath work actually saved my physical structure because right. a huge component to breathing is diaphragm function. And when diaphragm descends, pushes on the kidneys, expands the torso, this is like, you know, my three month old son, when he's laying in his bed, his belly is, is not just, it's not just belly breath. It is 360 degree expansion. And that keeps your spine stable. It gives your hips more stability. It gives you more power, you know, adds pounds to your deadlift and it makes your body function a whole lot better. And so these are the sort of things like nose breathe 24 hours a day. Yeah. Do five to 10 minutes of box breathing, and you're going to change your physiology, change that control you have over your nervous system, your thoughts, your emotions, maybe even, you know, work your way into meditation. And then the last thing is realizing that the body is supposed to uh, expand in every direction, essentially with a real proper breath. And so starting on the ground with uh, like happy baby, I really love like, you know, having folks throw a two pound plate on their belly, just lay down and just lift that plate. And that will kind of reverse engineer some of this dysfunction and you might walk around and feel a hell of a lot better. 
Dude, I love all that. So I, uh, my buddy just sent me this book. Have you read this yet? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. So I, haven't, I, I haven't looked at it yet. I'm just kind of busy with some stuff right now, but I, I look at it and a, a, a true story. And I've never shared this with anyone. Um, in my early thirties, bro, I started getting severe sinus infections, like had no idea what was the matter. I would lose my voice. Right. And obviously it was all due to breathing, but you know, you know, through, and this is before I was really into my contemplative and inner work practices and whatnot, but uh, with through introspection and pure luck, to be honest with you, of finding a person, um, I realized that what happened to me is in my early thirties is when I had made a lot of money and I was F you pay me. And then I met my ex who I, again, I was not living the best of lives morally. And uh, we started partying. And I started like traveling and, you know, doing, living the life of a guy with a lot of money. And, you know, I started getting anxiety, I guess, from mouth breathing. And so I was getting these sinus infections and I couldn't talk and my voice would leave for like three or four days. It was horrible, right? Because you're a communicator and you can't communicate. And finally, I met a guy who was like, look, I'm going to get put you in touch with a rehabilitation, a speech, a speech rehabilitation specialist or something. And she recommended me to a, 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 a holistic breathing coach. And I, and I'm not kidding you. And again, I was 31 years old. So this is like 18 or 19 years ago. And dude, within two weeks, I was a completely changed person. And it was just very, very s- simple things. And again, you know, I say this story because there's a lot of people out there that watch this podcast who, you know, consider themselves to be fit great shape, train hard, do all the things right, low inflammation, but don't know how to fucking breathe and yeah. are breathing through their mouth all the time. And then, as you said, as soon as they get that simple parasympathetic stress from whatever, you know, 10 text messages, did you see that? Fuck you. Right. right. And then it's like, it's, it, it, you just instantly go into it. And before you know it, dude, you, you're literally like, I mean, Joe, honestly, I want to ask your opinion of it, but I think a lot of people, who suffer from real anxiety, it's really just a lack of being able to breathe correctly. Am I right? You are right on, man. Uh, absolutely. So much. I mean, our nervous system, like I said, it's, it, it's for a lot of people, chicken or the egg, right? You know, and, but, but another big piece is you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. So a lot of these people that think they have a deviated septum, I don't know if you can see on the video, my nose, dude, this thing's been through the ringer. When I was a kid, say, I you took, some, you took some shots. Man. Yeah, I took some shots, man. I got hit with four different baseballs. I got <laughs> like, you know, I was a shortstop playing baseball and my coach, I, I had, I didn't have a throwing arm. I was like, why didn't, you know, this is like 10 years after I stopped playing baseball. I was like, why the hell didn't you throw me at second base? I couldn't even make the throw from short. My arm is like shit. And he's like, dude, he's like, you would take the ball off the face before you run into the outfield. You know? <laughs> so what I'm getting at is like a lot of people that are mouth breathing, they say, you know, I've got a deviated septum. I broke my nose in the eighth grade. I, you know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's chicken or the egg, man. And totally. um, when we understand the stress response, what actually happens when we, when we activate that sympathetic nervous system, and you've probably talked about this before, you know, it doesn't matter if it's your boss, your relationship, a bad night of sleep or microwave food, it's all kind of activating the same system. And when that happens, we actually dilate the sinus cavity right. in a way that forces us to mouth breathe right. because when you're sympathetic, you want the blood pressure, you want the heart rate, you want the digestive suppression, you want all of this crap that just completely destroys our health. So when we want to begin to breathe through our nose, and I know a lot of people have got deviated septum surgery, it almost never works yeah. but the, because the problem is this, this, this balloon in our system. And so things like humming, and getting that nitric oxide flowing and using our nose can, can kind of unravel that a ton. But I think so many people's anxiety problem is because they've activated, you know, even if it's only, I'm only 20% sympathetic, you know, you can look at your HRV or whatever. I think it's that dilation that's happening in the sinus cavity. That's just keeping the foot on the gas a little bit as it relates to the sympathetic, sympathetic system. And when you can just chill out, you can, you can see magic happen with, with that anxiety stuff. So, so, so let's speak to that. Let's go much deeper. So, you know, obviously on our podcast together, we were talking about Walter Russell and David Hawkins and these great luminaries and the key to everything in life to really true recognition of like who you are, what your divine purpose is as a physical being, you know, as a spiritual being in a physical body is stillness, right? 
attaining mind silence. And a lot of people have a lot of different words for it, but really it's just coming to a point of absolute stillness of just, you know, as Neville Goddard says, being. And a person who masters that, and anyone can, as you know, anyone can master it. It's just repetition, ruthless focus, you know, ruthless consistency of doing it every day, whether it's for three minutes or 30 minutes or even 45 minutes of just getting to a place where you just shut off everything. The drunk monkey, the parasympathetic nervous system. I mean, you should be able to get to a place where you literally are listening to the cadence of your heartbeat and you hear nothing else. And so getting to that point is inevitably slash invariably going to allow you to become a better breather. I mean, again, you know, you know, I, I, I love the, the statement from Walter Russell when he says, be silent and know, or be still and hear, right? Like it's the reality is, is like all of us as beings have to work on getting to a very silent, you know, qualitative, introspective place where we can drown out the quote unquote physical material aspects of the, you know, of the material realm and just be one with our presence and our being. And so I think it's important and I want you to really expound on it that right now, right? Especially in this crazy world that we're living in with COVID. So many people are suffering from mental health problems, from the news, from listening to CNN, to Fox, to Twitter, to wherever they get their information from. It just can just be overwhelming. And if you don't have this practice or, or at least attempt to have this practice, you just become bamboozled. So, you know, talk a little bit about getting to that place. And, you know, I would, you know, obviously you and I have been doing this, but, you know, maybe speak from a person who's not doing it, who really mm -hmm. could use this. I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, Jay. No, thank you, man. It's, um, it's an important topic. And, you know, uh, there's, there's kind of two big parts here. Number one is that, you know, nowadays, and especially in COVID, this shit does not come naturally to the human anymore, right? Because we have been, you know, you can say that we've been conditioned, or you can say that we've just not been paying attention, but whatever it is, uh, it's not coming natural to folks, their mind is crazy. So understanding that it, it is a challenge to, to bridge yourself into this system. And I think that one of the amazing things that you do, and I, I think I said this on our show, is, uh, you know, big, strong guys don't meditate, right? And um, when, they, when they see guys talking about this and, uh, and making this permissible and bringing this to that community, now there's a little bit of a permission slip that happens. And so I think that one important thing is to, is to find, you know, I don't want to say find your guru, but find somebody that you trust that's kind of putting out this information that you can kind of lean on, I suppose, or, or find a, you know, uh, you need some kind of anchor. And I'll tell you my anchor, you know, and I'll tell you how I started with this, because I was a, you know, an active kid, like I said, you know, prescribed attention deficit disorder drugs from the time I was, you know, able to walk. And what were you, you know, on Riddle? Were you on Ritalin? Is that the game? Uh, I mean, they gave me everything, man. So I was on, um, but I, even as a four, I remember at fourth grade telling my mom, like, hey, mom, like, I don't feel good on this stuff. Like, this isn't, and I wouldn't, I even then was like pushing it away. And, you know, I saved it all for college, you know? But, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, but I think that, um, you know, we're, that's a whole separate topic of the number of kids on Ritalin and everything else. Don't, I won't wind, I won't wind that top. But when I started to get into this, I had some great docs and some great advice. And, um, I started to, you know, when I first started to get into it, I convinced myself that like skydiving was a meditation and, you know, uh, lifting weights and that's when I'm focused and that's when I'm, but that's not stillness. Right. right. And so I convinced myself that I was doing inner work for a little while, way before I was. And so that's another important piece. Um, but I think that when people realizing that making it OK, that when you start this out, whether it's one minute or 20 minutes or 10 minutes, you know, if you you know, if you go to the gym and you want to you want bigger arms, man, you're going to have to do a lot of reps. Well, every time you bring that attention back, you're doing you're doing a rep. So give yourself permission to, you know, think about your boss or your relationship or whatever, when you're in your meditation, because that will improve over time. So don't judge. You got to let go of judgment when you get into this. So uh, number two, you need some kind of anchor. And for me, 
even today, my anchor is I get up in the morning and I've got a three month old. So I get, I wake up, doesn't matter what time it is. If it's four 30, if it's five, if it's six, if he's sleeping, I'm like, I'm sneaking out. I got to get into the bathroom and do my thing because you never know when, oh, you know, no. if I wait another minute. But what I do is I've got a, um, a red light juve light, a yep. infrared light. And I don't look at my phone before I go in there. I don't check Twitter before I'm going to no. do this. It's got to be, you know, if you're, if you're new to this, it's got to be early in the morning. So you're, right. you're, you're kind of still got some like melatonin in your system and you're still kind of hazy. Like that's perfect. And then put like, I love the red light. Cause it says, even it's if amazing. someone's outside the bathroom, it's, it's like, well, the red lights on, like I, you know, he's busy, he's still, he's chill and he's doing his thing. And so that's the other thing is some sort of anchor. And then the last thing I'll say is another thing that was extremely effective for me, two things. Number one, uh, my breath work practice, and I've shared this before, um, began with breath holds. Sure. Because I couldn't, I couldn't focus. So what I started doing was I would just hold my breath in stillness. Don't do this like, you know, whatever, in a bath or anything in case you pass out. But like, just hold that breath either in or out. You should start with it in at first, but eventually start holding it out. And that can be an extremely cool anchor where you actually don't get as distracted because you've only got one thing to focus on and that's your breath, right? Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Uh, and then the last thing that really took my practice to the next level is mantra yoga. Uh, you know, my wife is a uh, yoga teacher. She does a lot of mindfulness work. She does this stuff. And she pushed me into Kundalini yoga and mantra. How many times a day do you do yoga? Just once a day or do you do it twice sometimes? So we'll do a full like class, which, you know, again, yeah. a three month old, it's actually been pretty broken up. But like before this show, man, I went outside, I probably did 15 or 20 minutes. And then I did some, uh, some ego eradicator and, you know, just rocked and rolled. But, um, but that really took my practice to the next level and really connected me back to breath. And I'll tell you one more quick story, Jay, if that's okay. Please. Oh, absolutely. Um, when, you know, when uh, Amelia and I were kind of new, she was uh, working and, you know, she was like, hey, uh, my favorite teacher's teaching, you know, go to yoga. I really want to get into this. And da -da 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 -da. So I just show up to the yoga, yoga place and I, I check into the yoga class and it was like 50 or $60. And I was like, holy smokes, like that's an expensive yoga class, 50 yeah, exactly. bucks. Like, oh, right. wow. Long story short, I accidentally signed up. She didn't know, but I signed up for like a four hour workshop. Oh, wow. Right. But it was really like a, you know, it was some kind of like, you know, either, you know, full moon event or, you know, whatever it was. But dude, I did, I had really, I had really never even done this yoga, but I got so incredibly just high. Or torn into it. That's amazing. Yeah. Torn into it. I ended up doing a 30 some odd minute and I found out after it was 30 something minutes, but we did this 30 some odd minute meditation with our arms over our head. Wow, Amazing. And after that, I was like, holy, that was, I thought it was five minutes. I had no idea. I thought it was three minutes. I was like, that yeah. was 34 minutes. Wow. My strength and conditioning program needs this. <laughs> like, no, exactly. So, well, you, you actually, in, in, in that time, you know, and I've come to see this too, like in, as my meditative and contemplative work has gotten deeper, you tap into orgone energy, right? And I don't want to like get all woo woo, but like, you know, there's again, a lot of evidence out there that in the very beginning of the morning, you even said it best, like when life is teeming across the universe and of course, planet earth, there are prions, right? Which are kind of like biophotonic signals of life. And that's what you tapped into. And it's, by the way, it's in all of us. It's in our biofields. They can, they measure it. You know, yeah. the, the, the Wilhelm Reich created the orgone energy generator. And then there's this other guy who's been suppressed and he's dead now, but he created a device where he could read your biorhythms. So this is all observable, but again, highly suppressed um, for now, you know, hopefully. Yeah. Eventually, as this golden age continues to expand and the world changes and shifts and more and more people wake up, we will have access to that. But dude, you know, you're proof, living proof. I'm living proof. Anyone who has these type of practices taps into that energy. And that's so cool that it was for you for yoga. You know, truthfully, I want to do yoga. I've read so many yoga books. Um, I've done three classes in my life. Um, and every time that I did it too, dude, like amazing. 
Like I literally came out of these classes and they were like, one was Korea and then the other one was the one that you just did. And I forget the other one, but there's like one um, place in Glendora that teaches all these classes. Yeah. It's like 4.30 in the morning, right? So it's yeah, like for always. me as a creator, it's so hard for me to like work until 12.30 at night and then get up yeah. in three hours to go do this, you know, where I really need my five, five and a half hours sleep. Anyway, it's an excuse. When I move and when I get down there, that's one of the first things that Monica and I have on our agenda for 2021 is to get fully immersed in yoga. And I, I mean, I mean, Monica does it now. She, you know, puts on the videos, right? Yeah. And does it in the house in the morning when she wakes up now. Um, and, and she probably does it tw twice a week, minimum. Yeah. And has been And has been for two years now. But that's something that I want to do with her because I truly think that that's a way to connect, you know, from a divine masculine feminine sacred human construct um to do to, to do yoga together and like i said dude i have literally six books over here that i've read on, right. on on yoga and stuff like that and how amazing it is especially going yeah. back you know to the eastern yogis and to the people into the, the, you know the individuals that wrote the Bhagavad Gita and all of those great things like how influential yoga was to the psyche and how it is still is today and again it's just not intertwined into western you know, physical culture, like it necessarily has to. What's some other stuff though, from a contemplative or introspective work standpoint that you do? I mean, obviously I know you're huge about getting out in nature and grounding. You know, I want to say this, um, you know, I did a podcast with Robert Stanley about four months ago, him and I went into the Malibu wilderness. You probably have been there too. Yeah. And you know, where the ruins are. And yeah. We were in the middle of a field surrounding these ruins and man, I'll tell you, dude, like I was able to just like meditate for maybe four minutes, maybe six minutes, four to six minutes. And I just heard the energy in that field in between those sacred ruins. And I swear to you, and I've said this a million times, I've written about this to me, God source energy, creative force, however people spiritually want to in tune to that is really just the information of the universe and when you're in tune into that natural nature frequency that's god you can literally hear it. it's like a vibratory you know it's like all the insects and everything going around the wind whistling the trees blowing all that stuff that's god to me and it's like when you go out into nature and you just isolate yourself and again if you can hopefully attain stillness in nature there's nothing better dude Oh my gosh, no, it, and it's essential, right? Because I think, you know, we talked about one of the reasons it's, you know, so hard to get still for so many people is that it's just so far from what they're doing on a daily basis. And, you know, even, even tying back to, you know, part of the reason why people stay in their bubble or their belief system uh, as it relates to everything else that's wrong, whether it's the food pyramid or vaccines, right. is, you know, once you, once you change one thing, you have to change everything or once you... Exactly. Once you change one belief, you have to change all your beliefs. So once you question something, you have to question everything. Yeah, so there's, there's, that's the piece. And, and when we look at what makes a healthy person, yo man, the sun has to hit your face. You know, the sun has to hit your face has every to. single day, you know, and obviously, you know, I spend a lot of time in Iceland. It's dark 20 hours a day. We can talk about that if you want, but um, the sun in some way, shape or form. And even if it is a, you know, a juve light or something like that, you have to get that. And the other huge piece, I had a good friend, Eric Remensberger and people can Google him and find his podcast, but he stayed, he put stage four metastatic prostate cancer, Gleason score nine into full remission with no conventional treatment. And the number one thing he told me was, Joe, you live in Venice, get in the ocean every single day. Yeah. Just get into that ocean, get right. into that nature, you know, get still. And he actually put his prostate cancer. He kind of diagnosed himself. He's like, this was my divorce. This was my, right. you know, this was right. this, I know the it exact. It was all stress. Trauma. Yeah, it was all stress. Yeah. It was all stress and it was sexual, just energy, just being held and, and suppressed. and. Um, and so, so Jay, when we, when we tap into, you know, when we want to change our meditative practice, we want to practice getting still getting up from under the fluorescent lights, you know, stop getting oh. your sunlight through a window, know. you know, this, you know, um, all of these things that are so unnatural change your food. And more importantly, I think one of the, one of the huge pieces of the puzzle is that sort of, uh, that sort of self-love that you share so much. And I know you're on day, I don't know, day 18 or something. <laughs> So I think so. <laughs> that makes a huge, huge difference. And I'm doing it with you, man. And, and I think that when Thank people, you, when people do these things, when they start to change the relationship with the meditation as, and this is part of the work I do with a lot of people is 
um, I joke with uh, some of my biohacking or some of our mutual friends that, you know, maybe come, maybe come to me. I say, dude, I get the people that you left in your wake because all of a sudden they had 50 things to do. They had to get still first thing in the morning. They had to uh, make their coffee just right. They had to like get out in the sun for 21 minutes and then they had to take their shoes off for nine minutes. And then they had to do 15 push ups and 23 squats. And- take their 10 Kion aminos. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 20 grams a day. No, but um, I do love those. But um, when you change the relationship from a to-do list, a a spreadsheet, uh, a checklist into a self-love practice, that's actually the anchor that we really need to find. And the cool thing about that, Jay, and I'll put a bow on this, is when you change that one thing and you start connecting with self, Right. Now you just want to go outside. Exactly. Now you just want to hear those birds. Now you just want to take your shoes off and you can stop judging those things because right. that's at the root of this. We learn, you know, when, you know, when we're six years old and, you know, it's Christmas morning and, and grandma gives us an ugly sweater, pretend you like it. Like, you know, exactly. You like it. Just, right. just show, you know, show grandma that you really love her. And so we, we, we are learned to kind of, change how we feel or how we present ourselves from a very young age right. and we learn to judge feelings and we don't have to get into religion but when when we learn that it makes it very hard to connect with what's actually inside the the skin suit right totally um listen man we got like four minutes i want to get you out of here in four or five minutes and obviously i want you to share with people how can they work with you and stuff but um yeah. you know just back to the self-love thing <clears throat> every day, right? We'll just share it for people that are not, you know, following us on social media and, you know, in our inner circles and stuff. Like, you know, if you come from a place of contribution and you come from a place of obviously gratitude, and again, I don't want to make it cliche because everybody says this, but again, that statement, right? That mantra, I am self-love and I am worthy of the prosperity and the abundance the universe provides, you know, if I choose to accept and allow it, right? And I think what I wanna talk about and give your final words on is that most people who have an inner work practice or a contemplative practice who listen to guys like me and you, and there are many of us, you know, they get to that point where they know how to say those things, but they don't choose to accept and allow. A lot of people understand acceptance, but like my biggest block, my most resistance was, knowing those things, but then still not allowing them into my life in the way that they were going to come. So I want your thoughts on that. And let me just clarify for people of the lost, meaning, you know, you're to be worthy and to be uh, contributional and to be um, from a standpoint of abundance and prosperity to be grateful, but you are resistant to how it comes into your life. And it's not until you actually say, okay, I'm dropping all the boundaries and I'm allowing everything to flow in, regardless of the perspective that I have as it comes in, right? Which is you've just been very eloquently and elegantly saying, um, you know, it's a flow state. You, you cannot be resistant to the idea that it's going to come in as it is. Your thoughts on that? Oh my gosh, Jay. Yes. Uh, thank you for the setup. This is perfect. Um, so I think this is one of the biggest things. And when people, you know, I think, uh, the, the like self-help books, right? So if you look, I was trying to figure out where to start this thing, but you know who the person most likely to buy a self-help, self-help book is, you know who that person is? Somebody that in the last 16 months has bought a self-help book, right? right? And so when we read these books and we learn things like the secret or thinking real rich right. or, you know, any of these things, we think, you know, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to say, you know, 19 days from 19 months from now, I'm going to have that blue Mercedes. I'm going to have a, you know, a, a, a hot wife, I'm a, whatever it right. might be. Right. And then we just sit and wait. And I think that what the amazing thing about the universe and the thing that people really need to get over is that you never know what shape, what form, what, what message, what sign, what energy, what good is going to come into your life. You never know what form your work is going to bring whatever is going to come into your life. And more importantly, you hit the nail on the head. And this is the story of the Chinese farmer where as things come in, you don't know if they're good or bad. And the, you know, for me, you know, the, 
uh, you know, example I use sometimes, I fractured my skull and had a traumatic brain injury and almost died. Yeah. But it led me to everything I do today. And every lesson I've ever taught has come from that experience. And so can I say that it was bad? No. And so getting over ourselves and, and I, I wrote something the other day that like, even with COVID, we can say that 2020 was bad. But how many people spent more time with their kids? How many people got exactly what they wanted? They wanted to work from home. They wanted to live in Denver. They wanted to uh, start a business. They wanted to quit their job, whatever it might be. And so when we start to stop the judgment around things that are coming into our life and instead sit with them, and I think you mentioned this on the show we did together on my podcast. Yep we can actually grow and connect with source and more comes in. And all of a sudden we're in a place where suddenly we look and you know what, you know what, I think this is what I'm chasing. I think this is it. I think, I think this is what it's all about. And you know, I don't, I don't, I either got the blue car or I realized that was a, that was a shady consumer as part of me. And instead I've got this, you know, 1983 Audi that is just freaking awesome. And it's exactly what I've always wanted. And so I think that when we, when we, when we connect with uh, that sort of, that, 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 that grateful place of non-judgment and we watch this amazing thing that's unfolding in front of us and we stop kind of trying to figure it all out in the moment, all of a sudden, without warning, we're going to realize we finally found our happiness. That's it. Beautiful, man. That's, I mean, honestly, dude, like I hate to break the amazing continuity of what we just said, but the Joe, man, amazing, bro. I love you. How can people work with you? You know, what is the best way for them to find you from a content standpoint? And by the way, just so you know, dude, I'm like mushing, pushing this to the front of the line. I have a big queue right now and my company's going to like be like pushing back on me, but I'm like, I don't care. But again, how's the, what's the best way for people to work with you and find your content right now? Yeah, Jay, thank you so much, brother, and much love to you. And this has just been a great hour, and Amazing. we'll have to do it again sometime, both on my show and yours. For sure. Uh, I'm, I'm Coach Joe D.I. just about everywhere, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, .com, and there you can find you know different ways to work together. My company, Runga, and I, I just started calling it a company. It was really just this passion project where we bring people to Napa for the weekend, and it's just this incredible experience. Uh, my team over there is actually about to launch the tribe, which is an online community where we're going to just inundate people with resources. This is kind of one of the ways we're kind of going to give back to folks because so many businesses, 60% of businesses are out of 60% of restaurants out of business now. Know, and there's so many people that have just been put into a tailspin that we wanted to make like a very accessible incredibly valuable. So I've basically backloaded a ton of the content that I use for my private coaching clients into this program. And, and that's going to be launching soon. So that's rungalife.com. Uh, you guys can check that out. And I think it's going to be tribe.rungalife.com for that. It's going to be live in a couple of weeks, but yeah, Jay, thank you so much, brother. Man, that's all I got. It's funny. No, it's amazing. It's getting dark on you right now anyway. So it's like the perfect time to sign off. But bro, like I told you, man, my wife and I, Anything you're putting on, any way I can contribute, I can help be a part of community, you know, um, retreats, whatever. I want to be a part of it. Uh, you and I will talk further in a little while, or if not to, uh, after this, you know, if you, you know, go be with the family and stuff, we'll talk tomorrow. But man, huge love in my heart for you. Tremendous podcast. Thank you for being who you are as a human being. Thank you for contributing to the global collective. Because again, it takes courageous, kind, concerned, caring, compassionate people like you to make the world a better place. Everybody out there, please support Joe D, amazing human being. You already heard all of his URLs. Go to his website, coach with him. It's coachjoed.com. And of course, if you want to email him, you can email him at joe at rungalife.com. Remember people, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys next week.